This is Star Talk Sports Edition, and today's topic is gambits and game theories. Ooh, mm. gotta gotta love it. And who do I have? Of course, my intrepid co-hosts, Chuck. Nice, Jack. Hey, hey, Neil. All right, very good. You are not the professional athlete in this group. <laughs> I would go to Gary O'Reilly for that. <laughs> That's right. Ga- Ga- Hi, Neil. Gary. Hey, Chuck. What's All right. up, buddy? Now, none of us have any particular competitive expertise in the stuff we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about game theory. We're going to talk about 21st century chess. Uh, and there's a lot going on there. Do, do, is it a sport? Do we bring it into the Olympics? Or are computers Ooh. beating us? What's going on? So I, hey, we had to bring in an expert, okay? And so we're bringing in Dr. Jonathan Schaefer. Jonathan, welcome to Star Talk. Thank you very All right, much. you're a professor in the computer, computing science department at the University of Alberta, Canada. Formerly, you were dean there, but you quickly stepped down, I think wisely, so now you can actually get some work done, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is how that works. All yep. right. Uh, and we have on record here that you created a computer program called Chinook. This is now 25 years ago that became the world champion of American checkers. Okay. Okay. Now checkers, you know, but that's not chess, right? So, as so. as as checkers is often disparaged by that comparison. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah, that guy's playing checkers, not chess. <laughs> I'm just. That's right. That's right. That's right. I'm just. I'm just saying. But uh, what what I liked especially is uh, you're also behind the program Polaris. Did I get that right? Great name, by the way. Um, how to get in good with every astronomer in the room uh, that plays the. A Texas Hold'em poker. So for me, that's that's, right. a, that's uh, even uh, more intriguing. But tell me, uh, what what kind of work have you been involved in with AI and and game solving? Well, of course, I'm doing research in AI. And uh, when I was young, I wanted to be the world chess champion. <laughs> I mean, Bobby Fischer was my my role model when I was young. But a lack of talent and an interest in girls sort of got in the way. And so I turned to AI to realize my dreams. I couldn't be world champion. (laughs) Couldn't let my computer program be the world champion. Mm. So that led to, you know, building world champion caliber programs and checkers uh, and poker and a variety of other games. And so I'm a very competitive person. When I start one of these projects, we want to win, and uh, I don't let human egos get in the way of trying to build superhuman game playing. Right. Programs. So what you're saying is you weren't you weren't as good in chess as you wanted to be, as inspired as you were by Bobby mm-hmm. Fischer. So you started writing software and code that could beat not only that would you kick but his possibly, ass. could kick your yeah. own ass. <laughs> Basically, that's what he, he was like. You know, if I can't be the best, I'm going to make the thing that's going to be the best, and then. By proxy, I am the best. Oh, oh I, I see. Even I, if he can't be the best. Even if I, I am a genius. <laughs> I'm a genius. <laughs> I am a genius. Right. So in, this is in movies, right? They're saying, oh, you want to kick my ass? Wait, first you have to kick my robot's ass. Okay. Right. <laughs> then yeah. you to get to me. This is how this works. <laughs> uh, but, you know, Chuck, Chuck, to your point, one of the most traumatic moments in my life was working on my chess program. And I'm a chess master. And the day that it finally beat me, I almost cried and cheered with delight. Uh, Yeah, you know what? I uh, I I know that feeling. I have it every time I have an argument with my fourteen year old son and lose. (laughs) (laughs) Sort of Darth Vader Skywalker moment. Yeah, but it could also be. It's very sort of Pygmalion, right? It's like your creation. Um, You fall. Did you fall in love with your program no, no that's right that's another that's a different ai program you're working on that's, say, that's, the, that's the robot girlfriend that replaced right. the young lady that got him interested in something else you chess. just asked the chess master that question and you uh, saw his move there didn't you just right. <laughs> so a couple of years back we i had uh, maurice ashley the chess grandmaster american yeah. grandmaster come to uh, he visited I, I forgot whether he was in town or we nabbed him or we, i forgot how we got him into my office but a chess grandmaster, and I, I asked him about uh, Bobby Fischer and what it is to get a machine to learn how to play chess. Do you learn the way Bobby Fischer learned or the other rules? Let's find out what he said. Grandmaster Maurice Ashley. 
Was Fisher innovatively brilliant because nobody trained him? And he had to figure it all out on his own, so therefore he came out of someplace else. Because had he been formally trained, everyone would know he learned these moves that way and that. If you come from somewhere else, if you're self-taught, nobody knows how to play you. Is there I some think, of that in there? I think there is some of that in there. Fisher was his own freak. I mean, he had his own genius. And his main forte, in addition to being immensely gifted, was his work ethic. He studied everything, looked at everything, looked at other languages so that he could read stuff in Russian. Uh, he, he was incredibly gifted at just consuming information. And then him being himself, he would- On top of that. He would just add his own twist to it. And the, you have to realize the whole Soviet school was pitted against them. They wanted to destroy this upstart. And they knew it from when he was 14, 15, 16 years old. I mean, this was, this was a, a star in the firmament they that they him. spotted and said, that kid can play. And, you know, it doesn't take much. I don't care what country you're from or race you're from, gender, I mean, you name it. You start playing chess moves and chess players are like, this person will kick your ass. <laughs> Watch out. And they knew it from when he was young, and he was bent on taking them down because he was, uh, he was a perfectionist, and he wanted to play against the best. So that drive, that energy uh, was, was unmatched, was unparalleled. Maybe, maybe Kasparov, we could argue, matches, matches that kind of focus, but th there's very few players in the history of chess that had that burning desire to simply eviscerate you, and that was Fisher. And, and he said it. He just, he loves All that these moment. battle terms. That's, that was, that's the game. I will crush and destroy <laughs> you. I will eviscerate you. That is, that is a war game. just pieces on a board. Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. We, you know, oh, oh, oh that's right. I got to go. <laughs> what? <laughs> go on. This is chess we're talking about. <laughs> chess is, chess is life. And that's, that's a direct quote from Fisher. Mm, wow. so, so, Jonathan, uh, if, if Bobby Fisher was sort of a perfect learning machine, uh, today, in modern sort of AI, AI models, are they perfect learning machines like Bobby Fischer? Is, is he some, some system, some method and operation to follow? Or has AI found even more clever pathways to mm. success? Well, humans are fundamentally different than computers, and they do things very differently. Bobby Fischer was absolutely remarkable. What he did in, in the span of time that he was on the top of his game is, is incredible. But what we learned from experience is that if you feed human knowledge into AIs, they don't play as well as if they can learn on their own. Take a look at- uh, Damn, the, that's cold. That's yeah, just not I right. was gonna that's say, that just makes perfect sense though. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it does in a way, and if you take a look at the Alpha Zero chess program, it starts off with just the rules of the game. And then it plays against itself. It's a very lonely experience, but it plays against itself millions of times and it becomes superhuman. And not only is it superhuman, it plays chess in a way that is so different than humans do that we can actually learn from these AIs. The nice thing about these AIs though, is that they, they don't have an ego. They're not gonna make a snide remark when they, they beat you. Mm. Um, and well, <laughs> they're completely they're still, different. I was gonna say they still for Jonathan. <laughs> wait, wait, Jonathan, you Behind could program the, scene, the AI to make snide uh, remarks. You could do wouldn't that. Wouldn't that be funny? Uh, actually, and, to, and, to, and, to, and to trash talk during the game. Actually, in my first chess program, that's exactly what I did. Because, well, <laughs> there's a competitive spirit behind the facade of a, an AI research. Oh, man, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh <laughs> funny. Oh, why didn't you leave that in there? I want so badly to give somebody, because, you know, these chess programs are immensely popular right now. And, yeah. you know, they have some of the free versions online where you can get like the beginner versions and you'll, I guess that's how they kind of suck you in. They give you the beginner version for free and then you like, you play that and then uh, you move up. But it would be so great just to have that program saying things like, that's all you got? Or, <laughs> oh no, Ch hey, Ch <laughs> you, you got to give him the Schwarzenegger Terminator voice. Oh, well. Uh, right, so now, now you've got to up the game and, and sort of characterize the voice and have certain movie characters that come in there and just then you can trash. Oh, wow. 
queen to bishop four. You're going down. <laughs> he got it. He got it. <laughs> uh, you know who you want to do next, don't wait, you? Wait, wait, so Jonathan, you said it plays millions of games. Uh, how quickly can it play a million games against itself? Yeah. Very quickly. And the reason is because these computers are operating right. at the speed of light. You know, the human brain is amazing, but it's incredibly slow. When Bobby Fischer plays chess, he's analyzing roughly two chess positions per second, which is fast for humans, but slow yeah. by computers. Take a look at Deep Blue. We all know who Deep Blue is. Chess program built in 1997, which defeated... By, by IBM. Uh, just to yeah, get, IBM's just to Deep Blue. Where it goes. 1997 technology. That's 23 years ago. That program was looking at 200 million ah. chess positions per second compared to Gary Kasparov's too. You know what's amazing? The media doesn't get it right. People are stunned when they say, oh, computers are better than humans. And I say, well, that's not such an interesting technology story. What's much more interesting is that the humans withstood the technological onslaught of computers for as long as they did. Because when you look at those numbers, the computers have an enormous speed mm. advantage. Well, wait, so, so computers are better... Well, what, what, okay, let me, let me slice it. Let me thread a needle here. Are computers better than us because they're faster than us? Or are they better than us because they are more clever? Because if they're simply faster, of course they're faster, all right? I'm not going to, you know, take, I'm not going to find the square root of a, an eight-digit number on my own. Give it to the damn computer, all right? So, so can you tell me that the AI is coming from a whole other place in where it's going? So the AI is two things, or, as are human chess players. They're search and knowledge. And humans do search very slowly. They only look at two positions right. at a time. Computers can go millions of times faster, and that's a huge advantage. Humans make up for the search by knowledge. Gary Kasparov can tell you amazing things about chess. My AIs, maybe not so much. And so it's Plus, most of those million moves are not interesting, and, a, and, a, and an expert chess right. would never the, 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 invoke There's them. a majority right. of the moves, an overwhelming majority of the moves, that yeah. are immaterial. They're ruled out right away. Right. So right. Yeah, but if you're building an AI that's uh, um, got all these speed advantages, it costs nothing to look at all these right. moves. And yeah, 99% of them are, are bad, but if you don't look at all of them, you might miss something really good. When you talk about pattern recognition and machine learning, as opposed to actual intelligence that human beings possess, which is an actual, the same type of thing, but executed differently. In a chess program, has there ever been the computer that has come up with the innovation? So it's, wow, look at that. Nobody's ever thought of that. Wait, Chuck, that's... That's what Jonathan said. It said they play the game completely yeah. differently as a result and of having find, explored all the parameter space. And they find all these amazing things that humans never even thought of looking at, or quite frankly, humans overlook. So Jonathan, if, mistakes. if we've got this powerful speed freak of AI, could it then go away and bring together or bring forward something like Nash's equilibrium? Or is it just going to deliver in a certain way, but not create things like that, that will allow to roll out into all sorts of different areas. What's, what's, Na what's Nash's, yeah, yeah, how do, wait, what's what Nash's game equilibrium? <clears throat> I, I don't... Com uh, Chuck, do we have to explain yeah, absolutely. everything Absolutely, that's why I'm here. <laughs> that's and exactly me. why I'm here. <laughs> so you guys can explain everything to me. <laughs> no, what is, what is Nash's right, so, equilibrium? So more, more right, hold on, more right. broadly, the, what role does game theory mm. play? And and which is how and when and why you might even find an, a Nash equilibrium in the middle of it. So there's one type of game, it's called a perfect information game. It's like chess and checkers. At every point in the game, you know exactly what's going on. You know where the pieces are, you know whose turn it is, you have complete information. There's another kind of game called imperfect information. That's where some of the information is hidden. That's like a game like poker, where you know your cards, but you don't know your opponent's cards. John Nash came up. Oh, by with the way, it. that would include even bridge, yes, where you're playing with someone, cards, but you don't yeah. know their mm -hmm. cards, even though you're on the same side, right? Okay. Right. Um, but uh, um, let, let's stick to poker because I think sure. uh, more people um, 
understand that the the real concept of poker, which is a fundamental concept, which is bluffing, which is a really important concept in uh, in poker. And uh, what Nash came up with was this brilliant idea that in these imperfect information games, you can get to a point where everybody has a strategy they can follow and everybody breaks even. And if you deviate from that strategy, you're going to lose. And so this Nash equilibrium is something that um, is quite surprising. Uh, John Nash uh, got the Nobel Prize for it. In and economics. Of, in, it, economics. in economics, that's right. And, and many of your listeners may, may recognize John Nash from the amazing movie called A Beautiful Mind, which details his, his at times, tragic life. What's interesting, though, about this, this Nash equilibrium, since you bring it up, is that uh, people think of poker as being a, a game of deception and bluffing, and it is. But the reality is, is that uh, that's a right. human concept. And the AIs, remember when we talked about chess, they play very differently. They play almost alien-like in, in terms of uh, how they play chess. But when it comes to poker, my poker programs have no knowledge of bluffing or deception. It turns out that it all falls out in the mathematics. And so when you take uh, the mathematical area of game theory, and the Nash's equilibrium, and you use these concepts in your program, you get bluffing and deception for free. And um, the net result is you get poker playing programs that can, just like in chess, can beat all humans. Right. So you don't need to teach them how to read a tell or no. a, a, a facial micro expression. I, I mean, listen, because you're playing the, you're playing the percentages right. at all times. You're playing the yeah. math. It doesn't make a difference. Why do I care what your face looks like if I know that you have a 4% probability of having a particular <laughs> hand? I'm going to bet that 4% because I have a 96% chance No, 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 no. No, no, that's not it. It's whether there's a 4% chance he had the hand that well, was your I'm hand. Saying. I mean, of course, well, no, okay. no. I, I want you to have the hand that I will lose, Neil. <laughs> okay. I'm just <laughs> clarifying yeah. for but, precision but here. Yeah, okay, mean, so I, wait, wait, I'm, wait, wait. I'm, I'm very fascinated by this. What you're saying is this notion that I'm going to read, you know, I'm going to, they're going to wear dark sunglasses so you can't see their eyes, so they can't see their emotions, so they can't see this. You're saying that AI playing AI will bluff without having to read anybody's body language. Yeah. That's correct. That's so cool. That's, a that's, freaky. that's amazing. So the cool thing is- Not only will they bluff, they'll the do cool it well. The cool thing is if you watch the world championships of poker, they have an AI playing along with the game that's being played so that yeah. you can actually oh. see all of the mathematical <laughs> mm -hmm. probabilities and percentages of each hand so that you can see how well the actual human players are playing against one another as opposed to the measure of, of an AI. And I think it right. makes it, it's the only reason I watch. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so Jonathan, we got to uh, bring this segment to a close, but just, just let's no. exit with just, I got one question. Let's keep this guy. <laughs> this is fascinating stuff. <laughs> He's our new best friend. Exactly. <laughs> No, yeah, new best yeah. friend, right? Oh, you because you want to win some poker games. Yeah. So you want to. That's why you like that. So <laughs> actually, Jonathan, I, I, I'd like to play Chuck and poker. I think there's a real opportunity absolutely. there for me. I tell, I tell <laughs> him, oh, 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 oh. Jonathan, yeah. Jonathan, I would. That he, he just he that was just a no, really, smack because down. let me like, tell you yeah, something. I, you I would be offended if my poker face wasn't. You gonna lose? You gonna lose? <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I would just have to use my best Arnold Schwarzenegger takedown and put you in your place. <laughs> so, are, are you working on any programs now to beat something in the future that we're gonna you're gonna show up in the news? Uh, right now, no. I'm working on some fundamental problems to do with games, but not to build superhuman uh, game mm -hmm. playing programs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I like is you know we do games game the whole gaming universe is rising yep. up in everyone's awareness, yeah. especially ours, and so. Uh, if we can bring you back to talk about other games that show up, that'd be great to have you as our sort of man mm -hmm. at arm's reach how, for when we need How are you at Monopoly? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really good at rolling the dice. I've practiced a lot. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So, so, Jonathan, it's been a delight to have you on. We will definitely find a, an excuse to bring you back since you're you, apparently you're our best friend now for these <laughs> <reasons. laughs> All right, uh, Jonathan Thank Schaefer, you. thanks for joining us. And we'll, we'll be back shortly on Star Talk Sports Edition, Gambits and Game Theory. 
We're back. Star Talk Sports Edition. Gambits and game theory. And in this mm-hmm. segment, we're going to focus on chess in the 21st century. You know, chess brings back all these images of like old crusty men playing at tables <laughs> and things. And I think that that's been changing of late. And so I, in, in this segment, I want to sort of broaden this out. But before we do so, let me reintroduce my co-host, Chuck Nice. Chuck. Hey. What's Chuck, Chuck, what's, what's that shirt you're wearing? You got that? I kind of recognize. What, it I, says, science is true whether or not you believe in it. I re, I, I've heard of that quote. Yeah. <laughs> mm. you, re, you resemble that quote. I, I resemble yes. You rese- yeah, no. So this is a cool new Star Talk shirt that. Uh, okay. I don't even have one yet. Okay. No, no, All right. yeah. So uh, you got on the early list for that. I did. Uh, okay. I, I got this, and uh, I got it along with a vaccine, so I'm just good now. Um, oh. <laughs> oh, he pretended he was 90 years old and stepped ahead of some little old lady. That's, yeah, exactly. that's... No, uh, but yeah, you you can pick these up now. You can order these now, people. Look at that. And it's nice. really cool. I mean, we'll right, cool put a link in it. I, hadn't, I haven't seen it yet, so that's a, you're all yeah. doing this behind my back. Very uh, cool. Uh, yes. Gary. Yes. Always good to have you, man. Thank you, my friend. Okay, I love your sports sense. So here's with it. None of us play chess, or if we do, we're probably not good at it. Not so exactly. We, no. we needed somebody who had some street cred in this at all. So we've got somebody who won the girls' nationals, U.S. girls' nationals, at age 15. Ooh. Okay. Are right, currently ranked women's FIDE master. Okay. That's a title. All right. And you're host of, she's host of, Botez Live, all right, on Twitch, alongside her kid sister, Andrea. And she's a 24-year-old trash-talking chess player and internet influencer, Alexandria Botez. Alexandria, welcome to Star Talk. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited. (laughs) Excellent, excellent. I got to ask you the, the, the perfunctory questions like, what got you interested in chess? Let's get these out of the way. So, so right. give us a give us a short history of your interest in chess. Yeah. So uh, traditionally in the U.S., chess has been seen as a game for nerds, but in Eastern Europe, it's a game for everyone. And my parents came from Romania, where there was a very heavy chess culture. So my dad actually started teaching me when I was six. Oh, okay. Ooh. So this is just, that's like here, like you go out with your kids and, and play ball with them yeah. in the backyard. Yeah. Yeah. There they set you up in front of a chessboard. Man, that's badass. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I mean, all of the kids have to do it. It's just kind of a rite of passage. Wait, wait, but 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 you didn't reject it. So not everyone is going to yeah. embrace it. So what's well, different she, about you? She wanted to eat. <laughs> oh, oh, oh Chuck, honest. there's a window on your parenting skills. <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, actually, I think it started just because I was super competitive, which I got from my dad. So he actually wanted to troll my mom, uh, who didn't play very much chess. And he said, I'm going to teach my six-year-old daughter how to play, and I bet she can beat you in two weeks. Oh, the trash wow. talking is wow. in the house. So it's in the blood. Well, yeah. I grew up like this, so when I say things, it's not my fault. It's been ingrained since a young age, you know? <laughs> all right, so all right, so you that's your baptism, your chest baptism. Yes. And, but but that wait, does, wait. Two weeks later, I beat what her happened? with an yeah. opening trick. I mean, think of the Terminator coming into chess with a, like a four-move tactical combination he remembered, and then I just got lucky, and my dad just will never let my mom forget. <laughs> so, Wait, so you beat your mother so he after won two the weeks? Bet. At chess, won at the chess, Neil. Careful how you phrase okay, that. Okay, okay. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> All right, so, let, so let's... Let's take a peek at uh, my next clip with Maurice Ashley, because I asked him, what did it take to make it to the top of the game? Like, what, what happened in his life? And what, or what, generally, what is required for this to happen? Let's check it out. You made a strong case for being possessed in your early days for, in your love for chess. Can someone reach international grandmaster just simply by studying but not being completely possessed by it no really no you cannot become an international grand that means master. all the international grammars there's something a little different about them absolutely absolutely to 
to want to be a grandmaster of chess, I, I think you know Malcolm Gladwell talks about ten thousand hours. Uh, that's not enough. I mean, you have to have you play ten thousand games. Yeah, Don't forget the ten thousand I mean, hours. You you have to have the passion. You have to have the will. You have to have the determination. You have to have the desire uh, to study that much, to put in that amount of data into your brain. Uh, and on top of it, you have to have the thickest skin to tolerate being humiliated over and over on your way to the top. I've seen many talented young players. Players where people say, he's got the gift. He's the next Bobby Fischer. They, they all, He's the next Gary Kasparov. They get all and they're up. And you can see that they're excellent players. But the moment they get to a level where they start getting punched in the nose and they can't quite win as easily as they did back in the young days, they suddenly start to feel a little less comfortable and suddenly the game's not as much fun and suddenly they don't want to do it as much. And that struggle to get past that critical point has stopped many a prodigy. I think that happened to my son, because he was he beat people easily throughout elementary school, middle school. Bad thing to do. Into high school, mm -hmm. and he started beating me when he was twelve, and by the time he was fourteen, I would take one game out of thirty mm. from him, and then he goes into high school tournaments, and now like national tournaments, and then you start seeing people his age, even younger, and it's like oh, it's not so easy anymore. It's not so, you know. And, and, and I think the effort that it actually requires to be the best had eluded him all those previous years. And so I think he might have been a casualty in just the way you described. Yes, I don't know that that's what happened to him, mm -hmm. but, but that happens to a lot of young people. They, especially when it comes easy. You know, that, one of those things, things should not come too easily to you. <laughs> You're gifted, but you shouldn't, yeah, you yeah. shouldn't feel like, oh, come on, I'm going to beat everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, because it takes so much work. And the thing is, everybody at the top is gifted. Every last one of them is tremendously gifted, no matter which one of those players. Uh, Magnus Carlsen happens to be the best of the best of the best. But everyone after him is a freak. And they all have to work really hard, extremely hard to maintain that level because there's some kid who's 16 years old in China right now who everybody's pointing at and saying, he's the next one. And China's got a billion people and, to and choose they, from. And they're knocking on the door and you're sitting at the top like, man, I'm trying to hold on to this title. <laughs> I'm trying to be one of the best because as soon as that player comes up, you're gonna, somebody is gonna get replaced. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, uh, mm -hmm. Alexandra, so are you weirdly obsessed, possessed? Are you? And, and are you like thoroughly depressed now after that? <laughs> <hearing all that? laughs> uh, I am not a grandmaster. I'm a master. So just a master. I know. Just a master. Why, do, why do we? Why do we, uh, why, get her, why are we even talking to her? <laughs> why, why are we wasting our time here, guys? <laughs> She's just a master. <laughs> All right, but so t so tell us what level of weird preoccupying obsession has to descend upon people, or does it? It absolutely does. You have to live and breathe chess. There's moments in your life where it's your number one priority. And to end up being a professional chess player is worse than becoming a struggling artist. I just feel like it's worse. Actually, I'm sure artists also have it pretty bad. Okay. But the point is, mm, it, there's not a lot of money in chess unless you're in the top 10 in the world. So you're only doing it because of your pure obsession and com being competitive for the sake of being the best. So you have to have a very strong why to why you play. Wow. So, wow. Which, uh, so just to restate what you just said, you're saying in so many other professions, uh, there's a lot of money awaiting people who are all really good at mm -hmm. it. But here, the money's only awaiting the very few, so you got, you're not driven by money. Yeah, exactly. It's a pure passion sport. Gee, okay. Wow. Uh, no, so, 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 okay, in, in the words of a uh, soon-to-be former president, Mm -hmm. why, why would you do it? <laughs> <laughs> I actually think that's the question. And that was one thing that really changed my trajectory. Because when I won Girls Nationals, I got offered a full ride to um, be on the chess team at University of Texas. 
And okay, that's a reason. That, that is a good reason. That, okay, that's, that's a money reason. in there. Okay. All right. That, that is a good reason, but it would also mean that that would be my number one priority. And I realized that if I wanted to do chess, that's all I could ever do. And for me, that wasn't a compelling why. I'm much more passionate about things like making really good content for chess and getting the average person into it, which I think is so beneficial and so inspiring that that's why I switched more to um, the content side of things. So you, you see being more of an ambassador for the game, the sport, the endeavor, whatever anybody's going to call it. We'll get to whether or not it's a sport, I'm sure, at some point. <laughs> so I don't want to I don't want to be I don't want to chime in right there but is the is the ambassadorship where your passion is that's what you feel is uh because i think that that's you know based on what we were listening to with maurice i mean you're talking about an extremely high uh litmus uh, for anybody to 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 pass uh, in terms of uh that kind of dedication there are very few people who have that kind of dedication to anything so right, that's right. That's right. That's right. I mean, if you look at Edison talking about how much he worked. Right. right? Yeah. No one is saying, oh, he's just naturally brilliant. That boy worked right. his he ass worked off. He worked his ass right. off. So, yeah. right, wait, so, 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 Alexandra, are you so what you're saying is um, some of your chess energy that might just be purely put into chess, you are also spreading into um, as as as. As Chuck said, becoming an ambassador for the sport, raising the awareness level just to increase the health of the sport in general. Is that that is uh, now a priority? That is my my biggest priority right now, and I had cool. to have that switch because I know what it's like to be obsessed with chess, and that's what got me to the level that I'm at right now. But I think it's also extremely fascinating to be able to explain these difficult concepts to people who maybe never would have been into the game otherwise. At all, and and what's helping you, of course, is the the the, the runaway success of the Queen's Gambit on Netflix. Um, we, we we made time for that, saw it maybe within two days of and it posted. But uh, all anecdotal evidence suggests that I mean, from from the sales of of, of chess boards over the holidays mm -hmm. to the chatter that's going on and the membership and the number of total games played, uh, that's had a real effect on things. I mean, the two of you, right? Yeah, I mean, the Queen's Gambit success has absolutely bled into all types of chess events and chess content and chess um, equipment like boards. So it's been super exciting to see chess. Wait, wait, Gary, Sorry. did you hear she <laughs> used the word bled? That's very warlike. Yeah. Oh, no. You didn't spit overflow. No, you bled. It is. It's we, we've already heard... <laughs> Maurice Ashley talk about evisceration. Okay. Anyone thinks this is this is tea and, <laughs> tea and biscuits. As simple as I want to sell more chess boards. We'll yeah. bleed into it. This, this is pretty. This See, is what, pretty. Yeah. I mean, all right. We we are looking at brutality. In okay. The most, just want in the most just want to be clear. Form. Yeah. I didn't want that to go by without somebody other no, than no. me noticing. Okay. Keep going, Alexander. All right. You won't make me bleed my own blood. Isn't that one of the ones? <laughs> I mean, you got to think of <laughs> okay, these go. super passionate yeah. chess players. Nobody ever cared about this game when I was growing up. It was nerdy. People made fun of it. And now all of a sudden, it's a number one hit on Netflix. You never have a moment like this as a chess enthusiast in your entire life so we're just all trying to make the most of it and are so excited to see regular try, try people to surf that like surf this that game yeah yeah but you see it through yeah, and 21st I think, century I think lens. you're right to do it yeah. i think you're right to ride this wave because what i hear is parcheesi is on your heels and you're, uh, <laughs> you, you, you know what's what's that catches on forget about it <laughs> That, that new Netflix show about the Parcheesi champion. Oh, man, I'm intimidated already. <laughs> so the thing, the thing is, Alexandra, you look at your sport mm -hmm. and then being 20-something, you see it through your natural lens of digital, social media. How she's do a 21st I... century person, right? Yeah, and she's going to look at it and say, this thing needs to be electrified. I'm going in to fact, let me, let's an, establish yeah. this. Let's establish this clearly. Okay. Uh, so you're 24 going on 25. I actually turned 25, which it, but the, just recently. You turned 25. Enough, yeah. Okay. So what it means is you barely have a memory of the 20th century. If all, if you are a normal human, right. because mm -hmm. our, our earliest memories are when we're four, 
typically if you're really precocious, maybe three. Exactly. But basically between three and five. So the so the twentieth century is some is you are all made branded made in the 21st century. So what is that doing to chess? Because I don't want to cr entirely credit the Queen's Gambit uh, Netflix series for this, because you're out there, you got a huge following, you, uh, uh, you got and you check the fun with you and your sister. You know, I caught some of those, you know, <laughs> that, it's just fun to just to watch the confusion, right? And and it's fun confusion because there's always an objective there. So you, I'm not, you, you can't tell me you're not a participant on this landscape. Yeah, I mean, it's made me shift how I prioritize what we're doing with chess. Before, it was all about accuracy. It's a game of perfect information. All you're trying mm -hmm. to optimize is for the most accurate play. That's your number one goal. But now with um, playing online, when you're playing fast games, it's not just about accuracy. It's also about playing trickier things that are hard to calculate in a specific time. And then when you add an audience on top of that, the number one goal is making it either entertaining or educational, or if you're talented, both. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what Maurice Ashley had to say, because I asked him about the 21st century chess. And this interview is only a couple of years old, but let's find out what he tells us. I think that chess has definitely married well with the 21st century. It's now a big online game. Mm -hmm. Everybody goes online and plays everybody all over the world. You can just get online and play in these internet chess clubs and chess.com and all these great sites. And you just go on and you play players from all over the world. And I think that you're right. There is something that's lost in that face-to-face personal, mano a mano, and also just the interaction between people at a board. Uh, but at the same time, it also there's something enhanced because the game has gotten much more international. And if I'm a, I'm a kid in Brooklyn, I could get online and be playing some kid in South Africa or in Tokyo uh, or in Australia, just like that. What's to stop someone getting online? Because there's not a picture of you there. You're just this probably a name handle. What's to stop someone from attaching a computer to the other side and then you end up playing the computer? But you Absolutely don't know nothing. Absolutely nothing. The only thing that stops them is their integrity. And if, oh. they, and if there's a deficit of that, then you're going to be playing as a computer <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> I, I think there's, I mean, clearly there's some people who do that, but most people are online to have a good time. <laughs> and you can pretty much very quickly see when someone's playing a little you know, out of their league. Uh, and most people just want to have fun. So very rarely do they cheat. So, so Alexandra, what Maurice is not imagining here, because he's saying 21st century, you're exploiting the electronics of, uh, and the internet and the web. Uh, what he's not imagining is turning that activity into a spectator sport, which is what you've done. Right. I mean, nobody expected that for games either. It seemed a little bit counterintuitive right. for anybody to enjoy watching somebody else play a game. You'd play video games, which is huge. Right. Yeah. Um, and when you think about it, it's kind of similar to sports. Um, why would you watch sports instead of just play it yourself? Because you're looking at the people who are the best at this particular game and it's really entertaining and you learn more from it. You get inspired and chess is now having a very similar uprising on the internet where all of a sudden people think it's entertaining or educational to watch. See, so that's it. You do, you, you emulate your heroes, Neil. You know, as, as a young boy growing up watching soccer, I wanted to be Pele. I wanted to be the, the world's greats and, and emulate them. Wait, did you do the back the backwards uh, bicycle kick into the goal? Like yeah, but I missed the ball pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> you missed the ball. Oh, you, you did the move, but you just missed yeah. the ball. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And maybe I wasn't as naturally blessed as I imagined. Um, <laughs> I, all I all I look at when we when we listen to Alexander is you know chess may be becoming the new rock and roll, but I, am I looking at the new lead singer here? Oh wow, that's very flattering. Are you talking about Neil? <laughs> Oh, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. He needs yeah, me to flatter him, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's really weird to even think that. But yeah, I mean, I've definitely become one of the most well-known female chess figures. And I think that's what it usually goes like with um, the intersection of social media and any sport. It's the person mm -hmm. who is good at that sport, but also very good at spreading content and learning how to reach a wide audience. So, and, and that's what... I don't think Maurice was imagining as no. a 21st century um, manifestation of chess. And so, right, so, so this, this is interesting. So, Alexander, you could have birthed an entire, uh, an entire stratum of chess enthusiasts where 
Uh, well, you could be spoiling them because they think this is what chess <laughs> is. And if they get really good and they go to the international contest oh, and no. there's the Russian across the table, now they just want to smack talk it and that you're not supposed to do that. That's true, but I actually wonder what the desires of the average person is because anyone can play in an over the board tournament and they can enjoy it because um, they are also going to get matched with people who have a similar ranking to them. But for the hobbyist, now you can enjoy chess just by playing it online. So maybe it's going to be a difference where people are playing the most chess ever online before they've even ever played a game that lasts over two hours, which is insane. Wow. To me. Wow, See, okay, that's just a difference. That's just a difference. We've, been, you know, we've difference. been discussing strategies and Nash equilibrium with Professor, with Dr. Schaefer. And here I'm listening to a chess master whose strategies are very much 21st century. I want to trash talk <laughs> someone. I'm actually going to illustrate my moves as I play. So there's an educational part of it. There's a time, if you play blitz, that you'll play complicated moves. So as that person has to calculate in a short space of time, this is evil, by the way, just so as everyone knows, that's how I think about it, because I can't play chess. But this is strategy all the same. And Alexandra seems to be working it to her own her own advantage, most well, certainly. Well, we got to take a break, but when we come right. back, we'll get into her gameplay <clears throat> and just find out. Because, uh, Alexandra, we saved the, uh, part three for just sort of shoot the shit, yeah. right? So I just want to get into so sort of what your tactics are and, and how successful are they and what role do you have your sister, your kid sister playing in, in all of this. So we're going to take a quick break. This is Star Talk Sports Edition, Gambits and Game Theory when we return. We're back, Star Talk Sports Edition. We're talking about gambits and game theory as applied to chess. And I got Chuck, Chuck. Hey, hey. Always there, Gary. Hey, Neil. You're helping me do this, and we yep. have to bring in someone who had at least some expertise in chess, <laughs> unlike the three of us. And yep. so we went straight to the internet top, uh, Alexandra Botez. Alexandra, welcome to Star Talk. This is our third segment where we just try, we just uh, unscripted, just try to uh, learn some stuff, uh, free association. But what, why is there, there's a particular kind of gambit associated with you in particular? What is that? What? That's called what? the Botez Gambit. A Botez mm -hmm. Gambit. Well, first, tell me what a gambit is. Just what, what I, is a I will, but for those listening, don't try these at home. Uh, don't try these yeah. at home. Yeah, you, right. you can put your eye out. Don't try these at home. You at your own okay. risk. Um, so <clears throat> mm -hmm. gambits are usually when you give up some material for some kind of compensation that is along the lines of piece activation. So say you give a pawn, and even though you're down a pawn, your pieces are going to be more active. So it usually feels fair. Oh, I see. So, so, so you, sacrificing you, for an advantage or yeah. sacrificing to disadvantage. Yeah, sometimes you disadvantage yourself. That's what mine does. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the Botez Gambit is what now? So, uh, you know, it's a little bit embarrassing, but when you play chess that lasts only 60 seconds, you make a lot more mistakes. And I kept accident. And what kind of chess is 60 second chess? It's called Bullet. So the entire game bullet can't chess. last longer than two minutes. Wow. Yeah. So one minute for each exactly. of you. Exactly. Right, okay. Yeah. Right. Um, and I kept blundering my queen, which means giving it away. So I joked that it was a gambit and that I would get compensation as a way of kind of trying to overcome what happened. And then it just ended up growing from there, even though people use it mostly as a joke. Okay, so. <laughs> hey, Magnus Carlsen Botez gambited like two weeks ago. It happens to everyone. That's what I'm saying. Uh, oh, oh, now you're, you're hiding behind Carlsen now, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, okay. All right. Wait, wait, so isn't the question, you, you accidentally gambit your queen, but do you come out on top at the end? It's interesting. I actually played some games where I would give it up on purpose to see what my rating was without a queen against somebody my rating. And it was like a class A player without my queen. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that, that was pretty oh. decent. Okay, that's yeah. good. That's good. Now, I heard, wasn't there... Uh, the, I had it's the equivalent of playing with one arm tied behind your uh, back, basically. Oh, okay. I see two arms, because it's your most valuable piece. <laughs> <laughs> All you can do is bite them. Exactly. This is... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, that's hilarious. We're, so, so uh, I, had, I had my son do some checking on you, and so he dug up a series of games you played where every game your opponent... You, you played someone better than you, so you put you introduced some kind of handicap. 
So they introduced the Botez handicap on your opponent. And so if I remember this correctly, your opponent had to sacrifice the queen within the first 10 moves of those games. Did I get that? Yeah, right? that, that was exactly what we did. That's hilarious. I know, it was That's so th much fun, but he actually prepared for it. He used a computer to find the best lines to sacrifice your queen so that they're actually things that he could play and win. It was fantastic. Wow. You, do you take that as a compliment? Oh, that someone, for sure. That, that someone goes to that length to just say, right. Well, okay, actually, okay. it's just the competitive chess player in him. He wanted uh -huh. to win the All match, right. so whatever it takes. Yeah, plus it, that, that's just got to be fun to watch, right? And, and just to, to follow it and you cheer on. And, and I bet uh, people, I mean, are there many chess trolls out there or is it all just in good fun? I, I think there's a lot of chess trolls. I mean, when you look at the chess.com chat room, I, I love chess.com, but it reminds me a little bit of what you'd find in like a, an online dungeon or something. Oh, okay. Mm. Wow. <laughs> oh. Whoa. I love it. Please don't drop me, chess.com. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. We, we got your back. <laughs> right. We got your back. Yeah. You're yeah, not leaving gotta... the comments. You're just reporting. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so um, what did you major in in college? I studied international relations with a focus on East Asia because I wanted to do U.S.-China policy. Wow, Ooh, look at you. Yeah. Right. Look at you go, going all Condoleezza Rice on yeah, us. Yeah, she actually okay. gave me my yeah, diploma. Oh, oh, wow. Because yeah. oh, she, she's, she, she teaches uh, she's at Stanford, Stanford yeah. right? Oh, she's yeah, she they took her back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. She was do international you, relations as well. Exactly. Do you, play, do you see how I said that? I said they took her back. That was, <laughs> uh, do you play Go? <laughs> I've never played Go. I'm worried that if I try another strategic game, I'll get addicted and then I won't get better at chess. <laughs> Well, oh. I mean, you've, you've got a handful of devious strategies. Well, I say that more than a handful, I'm sure, for chess. I dare say you'll create something for a, a, a game like Go. I mean, most of my devious strategies come within the frame of time game. So if it's a one minute game, I do come up mm. with a lot of tricks because it's almost as if there's some luck involved. You can guess that your opponent might make a mistake just because they don't have time. Right. Oh, interesting. So, so okay, so you should now publish a book called, you know, The Book of uh, Botez Tricks. Yeah. I could, and I think I would make a lot of people upset on the internet because uh, people get really <laughs> upset when you dirty flag them. Okay, what is a dirty flag? It means when you make your opponent run out of time in a position they're completely winning. Oh, okay, okay. So, so if, if it's a timed event, who cares? That's what I say. Yeah, I said it's within the yeah. rules. I'm not doing anything wrong. There yeah. you go. It's, you went four corners on them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, they're like, you can't do that. You can't go okay, four so corners Okay, so how much, how much uh, I have to ask, just because that is what we do here. Um, uh, other than your chess geek underbelly, did you have any other geekiness where you were Star Wars or... You know, did you like physics or math? Anything like total card carrying geek? I, I was <laughs> always just really nerdy. I, I loved school so much because school was like a game. You know what your why is. Your why is do the best in school because it helps your life. So I would go and study by myself. I mean, I came from a really poor middle school. My family were immigrants, so we didn't have a lot of resources. So I spent all of my free time just studying for the classes that I was taking. Wow. Okay. So you know what? I, yeah, yeah, it's, there are kids right now watching this, going, "God, I hate this." Game. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> and and they're, watch, they're watching, saying, "That's exactly right. That's how. Oh, that's how you break the code. That's how you work." No, but you've got you've got a big gig now. You've have you just signed with? Uh, Envy. En yes, Envy Gaming. Yes, we just signed with Envy. I mean, congratulations. Wait, we is you and your sister. Yes, you said, well, yeah, and there my it is. sister. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Can yeah. you explain, I mean, not the finances, but how all of that is going to pan out? Because this is eSports, legit. Yeah. And are you going to be, now, are you going to be doing eSports chess or is it going to be competitive chess as watched on the internet? Here's what I think it should be, and then you answer. I'm thinking you should. they should let you do whatever the hell you want. Yep. It just now has a more visible platform because they're only interested in you because of you doing what you wanted to do. Well, that and would be so, that that would be smart. 
And then you and lead the entire creative presence on the internet. So what's what's going on? That's there? actually exactly what they want to do. So they're already esports champions. They've won so many titles in different games. And now what they want to do is they want to help make the content even better. So we have a ton of tournaments, uh, chess-related tournaments that are really good and entertaining for the average person. And they're going to help with the production, with getting it out to media, with helping our ideas come to life. And Android Right, because they've got the resources to yeah. do that. Yeah. So are you going to are you going to take this bullet chess and 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 feature that? Because I'm going to be honest, of everything that we talked about today, I mean, you're talking about a 1500 year old game mm -hmm. that has resurged, uh, that that has some seen a resurgence. I have never heard of this bullet chess. Wait, 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 wait. That's only one of three or four fast chess yes. words, yeah, right? That's, what, what, what are the others? What um, are the others? It's bullet and blitz. Blitz is over is usually five minutes or three minutes. And there's also right. rapid, which is usually 15 minutes. And is something well, that, and regular chess around. is what? Re and regular, regular chess, chess is, what? is an hour and a half with hour. 30 seconds per move, and you usually get 40 minutes or 30 minutes after the 40th move. So it could last like six hours. Yeah, that's wow. that's not what we're talking about. This, <laughs> this, <laughs> that's that, that's uh, not what they're uh, buying from you. We can't watch more than 12 seconds. Yeah, we're not, we're not <laughs> talking about that. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm just telling you right now, this whole idea of a game lasting two minutes is, Ooh. I mean, I think you want to talk about something that's compelling to watch on screen. Yeah. That's an amazing. Uh, uh, that's an amazing uh, place well, to think, be. Think about it, Chuck. Think about the landscape for esports right now. Our drone racing league guys, our friends at the drone racing league, those races last just over a minute, right. minute ten seconds. So everything is snappy. Everything is like really pacey. So this is a good. But right, so Alexandria, we we interviewed uh, a leading drone racing champion. Wow. And that's a whole other eSport thing mm, because it's yeah. all electronically controlled. We, we only have a couple of minutes left. So, Alexandra, have you thought of playing quantum chess? That's why I asked you how much uh, physics geek is in you. Because quantum chess sounds like if you if, if you get bored with chess and you want to take it up a notch. I, I, I actually watched videos on quantum chess and I played 5D chess. The thing is, these variants are so hard to do well, but they're very, very interesting. And I did enjoy... Wait, what is 5D chess? 5D chess is basically you have five planes of chess. So you have to make sure you're checkmating the person in all of the different planes, if I explain that correctly. Ooh. Wow. Okay. Well, that's that's two dimensions higher than three D yes. chess. Yes. How, how about the Star Wars? How about the Star Wars chess? Are, are you, have you have you ever played that where your monster kills another monster? Oh, I saw oh, that. I that was in that graphics thing. My dad actually told me if I didn't watch Star Wars as a kid, I wasn't his kid. So <laughs> I'll have to check that out. <laughs> yeah, his highlight of the week is watching Mandalorian and sharing my mom to my mom what Baby Yoda did. <laughs> Oh wow! Okay, uh, all right. So it's that your dad's going, a good man. Yeah. In the blood. Mm -hmm. Your dad. That, that's a good man. man. That's a good man. So you played five. I I have crack team of researchers that said you played five D chess after three beers. Well, yes, that was not the best preparation for the game. I admit. Guess <laughs> <laughs> guess. Okay. Um, so so it's it's three, three B five D. That's that's what that's exactly what that exactly. So. so so did the Queen's Gambit on Netflix, did that influence you at all? And uh, did you, were you like me when I see a sci-fi movie and I said, oh, that couldn't happen. Or, That's not right. Or, they didn't do that right. I think they had some good researchers on this, but how would you say overall they captured the reality of chess? This was the best depiction of chess on a screen ever. Whoa, but yeah. it is. Okay. That, that's the okay. one-liner and it's not just me who thinks this, it's everyone in the chess community from what I've heard so far. So this was just fantastic for that, but it was also super entertaining on top of being accurate. What, what more could you want? Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. right. And the lead actress in that, she's got those those creepy eyes. It's like, and I found out she's in she was in horror movies before this one. And you look at her eyes, it's like, yeah, put that woman in a horror movie. <laughs> because she <laughs> Feel. <laughs> wow. no, that's what she was. I didn't no, make this up. He's right. Uh, he's absolutely. Right. I didn't. She's got this stare. It's like you. Yeah, you know. Well, it's a great <clears throat> intensity for chess. Um, I actually yeah. watched her interview. She, she did an interview with Judith Polgar, the greatest woman to ever play chess. She was ranked number seven, so she was the only to ever break top ten in the world. And that was the mm -hmm. only part of the show that I would say was inaccurate. In inaccurate. Yeah, and it was basically. 
I, I I like that they didn't make it about being a female in chess, but if you they did, I, I, I remember thinking that exactly once yeah. they got past the registration scene, which was very interesting. Uh, yeah, it was just here's someone who who wants to win, right, right. Um, but but for example, if you would have thought in that time frame, if you're actually a female chess player, the first female to ever qualify for the candidates, which the winner of competes for the world championship, was denied being able to play because she was female. So if this was realistic, then you know. Beth Armon would have actually faced a lot more sexism. But what I loved about it is it shows you what it would be like to play chess if there was no sexism involved. And that is so inspiring. Right. And so that becomes the standard of how we all, and plus all the people who were sort of trash talking her for being female became her close right. friends later on and wanted to help her. And she got better than all of them. So this, if you haven't seen it, seen it, highly recommend it. Well, Alexandra, it's been delight to have you on, and we're going to keep following your your career that you and that of your sister. And uh, good luck with your new uh, your new sports contract. Yeah, and, and maybe one day we'll yeah. find competitive uh, chess in the Olympics. I mean, we have an no. Olympiad right now, so that's already pretty cool. But thank you so much for having me. This was an absolute pleasure. Yes, excellent, excellent guys. Okay, and uh, Chuck, always good to have you. Always a pleasure. And you're, you're tweeting at Chuck Nice Comic. Gary, thank you, sir. You're, you're still tweeting at my left. My three left feet. Your th my three left feet, and yeah. I don't, what the hell that means. And Alexandra, <laughs> just tell us where to find you on Twitch. Botez Live, B-O-T-E-Z-L-I-V-E. Uh, Botez Live, and do you tweet and have Instagram? Yes, Alexandra V. Botez. And, and uh, Instagram? Miss Botez. I wish I could have had all the same names, but they were taken. So Alexandra, thanks for all those handles. Uh, we can find everybody here on the internet and do so. You've been watching, possibly just listening to Star Talk Sports Edition, Gambits and Game Theory. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, as always, bidding you to keep looking up.